Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at amines as a base. Um, so we're going to look at the different types of reactions, we're going to look at some um, the reactions involving amines and we're also going to look at what makes it a strong base and the features that it has and look at the inductive effect as well. So we're going to start with uh, the, um, the basic theory I suppose is that obviously these things are a base and a branched Lowry base is basically something that accepts a proton. So um, I've got a little reaction here just to show you how these things work. Uh, now amines are an NH2 group and they're normally attached to, well they are attached to a, um, an alkyl chain. So uh, for example we've represented this as R um, or you can actually react it with a, um, an aromatic chain or an aromatic molecule such as benzene as well. So I'm just going to show you how they act as a base first. So this is um, an amine with an aromatic, uh, with an aliphatic chain. It could be aromatic, it could be either. Um, but effectively, what we have is a branched and lower base, so it accepts a proton. So in terms of the mechanism, we've got a lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen, and that's what is the key feature of amines that allows them to react in the way they do. And so we're going to draw an arrow, and you can see that this will obviously react with the H plus sign. Now this could come from something like um, water or an acid. Um, and it will form um, a salt, and I'll just write this up here, so for R, N, H, H, and then we actually have a dative covalent bond that's actually here with a positive charge that sits onto the nitrogen, so I'll put that on there. So this is an um, alkyl ammonium group or an alkyl ammonium ion, um, but if you had a HCl here, for example, this would be a salt, an ammonium salt. So we're going to look at a very specific example. So for example, we've got one here. Um, now, um, we're going to react this uh, ammonia, uh, sorry, this amine here um, with an acid. Um, so this has got an aromatic group on the side of it. So um, if we react this together, we have the same reaction up there. So what we have is N, and I'll draw this as a, in a display form so we can see exactly what's going on. There's our three H's that are attached to that nitrogen. That leaves that nitrogen with a positive charge. Uh, and we also have a Cl- minus that's uh, hanging around there as well. Now, this molecule is the salt. We have an ionic bond, as you can see here, between the positive ammonium ion and the chloride ion. We also have a, effectively, we have a date of covalent bond, although we don't really show it um, generally in these reactions, but it is date of covalent and or coordinate bond, and we also have obviously the standard covalent bond as well. Now, this is a salt, um, and this is soluble. Um, this group here, these um, aromatic amines, uh, are generally insoluble in water. They really struggle because of the um, how big the molecule is. So when we add it to an acid, um, it actually dissolves a little bit, um, and it will react, and it will form a soluble salt, and this is your soluble part here. Now, we can take this soluble salt, which I've redrawn down here, if we react that with a base, um, which is like a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, um, we can actually get the insoluble amine back again. Um, and so I'm just going to show you this here. So we'll have our, um, we'll draw our benzene ring, which is there. Uh, now, what happens effectively, this will then donate a proton um, to the sodium hydroxide, because this, uh, this is the base, so it's going to accept the proton. So the proton will come off here. And so what we have is NH2 that's formed back again. And um, the OH here will react with the hydrogen that's just come from here, and that will form water. Uh, and you can see that we've also got the chloride ion that's left. This will react with the sodium from your strong base, uh, and this will form another salt, sodium chloride, which again is, is, is very soluble in water. So you actually form your insoluble amine back again uh, with water and sodium chloride. So it is important that you need to know how these reactions work. And they could, um, in the exam, ask you for um, a variety of different molecules with an amine group on. And the reactions are all the same. But just remember that the bigger the molecule, the more insoluble it is. OK, so we're going to look at the next thing, which is uh, something called an inductive effect. And this is actually tells us how strong our bases are, because some amines are stronger than others. So the inductive effect is effectively the movement of charge, um, in this case we're talking about electrons, um, through a chain of atoms. So um, we're going to look at the inductive effects of certain groups that are could be attached to our amine um, uh, functional group. So 
For example, we've got CH3 groups. Now, CH3 groups actually push electrons into the nitrogen, and we, we class them as positive inductive effects. So these are a group, or a group of molecules that actually push electrons in towards your nitrogen, whereas things like uh, benzene groups here, or phenyl groups, they withdraw electrons from nitrogen. Um, so effectively, we call them negative inductive effects. Now, what this all means is effectively um, what makes something, or what makes an amine a good base, or a strong base, should I say, um, is the fact the availability of them lone pairs of electrons on the nitrogen. So the more available they are to a proton, then the more basic that molecule is. So if we have groups like this, which is CH3, if they push, or alkyl groups, which push electrons into the nitrogen, then effectively what we're doing is we're making that lone pair of nitrogen um, more readily available because we have electrons being pushed or more electrons being pushed towards the nitrogen, which means it is more readily available to, um, to be given or donated to a H plus ion. So we call this an inductive effect, and I've got some molecules here. Um, we've got a primary amine here with a CH3 group and an NH, um, and effectively this actually pushes electrons uh, towards this uh, an amine group. These electrons are then more readily available um, because it's got a, a good supply of electrons around it because of this inductive effect from the methyl group. So therefore, we can say that is a um, reasonably strong base. Um, and actually, if you have two alkyl groups, which are here, um, that actually is even stronger base because we have two CH3 groups or alkyl groups pushing electrons onto the nitrogen. Okay, if we come on to the last one, if we have um, a one with, which is what we call a tertiary amine, where we have three CH3 groups, actually, despite the fact that these actually push electrons into the nitrogen and give it lots of electrons, because this is now getting to a stage where the molecule is quite big, um, it's actually insoluble in water. And remember, for something to be basic, it really does have to um, dissolve in water. So if this is insoluble, actually, um, the tertiary uh, amine doesn't act, is actually not as basic as these ones here, mainly because it's not very soluble. So we call this an inductive effect. Now, amines, uh, sorry, amines, which are these ones here, which is your benzene, are actually electron withdrawing groups. They, uh, they try to delocalize the electrons or the lone pair of the nitrogen, as you can see on here, into this benzene ring. And because it does that, it's actually electron withdrawing. And we call that a negative inductive effect. And actually, um, aromatic amines are less uh, basic than um, the straight chain aliphatic amines, which are your CH3 and H2. So um, if we can do a comparison, our methyl amine, which is this one here, is actually um, much more basic than our ammonia, which is just the bog standard NH3. Uh, and that is more basic than our um, aromatic uh, amine, which is down at the bottom, uh, because this is electron withdrawing. So effectively, as we go down the group here, they become less basic. And the reason why is because uh, we the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen as we go down is less readily available, and therefore um, reactions with um, H plus ions to make them basic are um, a little bit slower and actually um, are not as, not as strong in terms of a base. So that's about it, but hope that helps. Bye.